Okay, sorry about that. Let's try this again. Because I like to record things because I'm a lawyer or myself. People and persons, beings of all ages, welcome to Writing Night's Press Sword Fight. Storytelling set mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you'll get the idea. Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. What you're about to see is a head to head battle of wits and words with a bit of trash talk sprinkled in. We take two fighters, put them in three round competition. Round one, two minutes each. Round two, three minutes each. Round three, four minutes each. Fighters can squeeze as many pieces into the round. Example, if they can squeeze any haiku into two minutes, go for it. However, there is no grace period. When time is up, fighters must stop or they are disqualified. Rounds are judged on a 10 point must system. Winners get 10 points, the loser gets 9 points or less. Judges are asked to judge based on six main qualities. Clarity of speech, efficient use of time and passion, word choice, impact, and originality. A seventh quality the judges should apply to themselves is consistency. If they judge one fighter on a certain quality, they should use the same rubric with the other fighter. While the sword fight program asks fighters to portray characters, all scores are legitimate and contribute to sword fight's persistent and ever progressing storyline. Let's introduce the judges. Woo! Shirts with birds and hotels and cars and plants. <laughs> Welcome, Josh. No, not really. In plaid shorts and white shirts and hats. Black rain. <laughs> Black rain also runs an open mic at Monroe Community Center on uh, like Third Street. Third Street Monroe. Third Street Monroe. So every Monday night, Correct. go check out his his open mic. And in the gray shirt, my wonderful, beautiful niece, Dora. <laughs> now the fighters. If you will join me, fighters. Pick a chair, doesn't matter which one. In this corner. Standing double snacked fun size, the Captain Marvel of Medias, the Kala of In Your Stars and Bread, Starbuck Incarnate. Yes. So grab your gun and bring in the cat. Welcome, Finn Race. <laughs> in this corner, she is the Wicked Witch of Warcraft, the literary Woo! Alicia of Canton, Ohio, and your feminist hero. Daria Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> so he gives him that pencil of the cane. Yes. And for those of you who don't know why, on Facebook Live, why I'm holding a, a pencil, it's our upcoming championship tournament as saloon in January. Which you can look up on our site, writingnights.com. Are you ready for a sword fight? Children, and we will make them heroes, shower them in gifts. Everyone will love you. 
You'll defend America. What a great honor. You'll get, you don't have a family? You might feel alone. The Army will give you one. It's only eight years. It'll fly by. It'll make lifelong friends. We are here. We will always be here. Well, I want to be a fighter, and I want to deploy, and I want to be a hero. So sign right here. You can't be infantry, because you know you're a female, but an MP is much better. Here's an extra 10 grand. See? Super easy. Not that hard. 17. Make your own decisions. You can't drink or vote, but hey, you can fight for your country. I have a lot of problems. See, I don't know really how I don't know really how to escape. So run to Uncle Sam. You are one of the same. Everyone will be the same, and you will be loved. Uncle Sam will love you. He will embrace you. He will hold you and mold you and love you. Now go fight us a war. Sick. 
your dick. I don't want to see my dick. I don't want to see anybody's dick. So stop sending me your damn dick pics. Dick? <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood rape culture, a branch of the patriarchy that makes our bodies into commodities to be assumed and consumed by those with the money to spend and the stroke to make things happen. Nudity on the big screen at 19 in order to assure that you're still getting work at 24. A quick bit of dick on the producer's casting couch. Hey, maybe if you're good, he'll put in a good word. Assure you a career well into your 30s, provided you can keep yourself looking good and thin and willing to fuck the producers again and again. No was never a barrier for you. Yes was only a key to the gate for us. And once you were finished taking what you wanted, you only let us through the gate if you liked the way we fucked. We never had a position to negotiate from. It was suck my cock or never work in this town again. The system rigged by you and your due pro conspirators vying for prime pussy real estate getting in on the ground floor. You stake your claim on women as if they were the new world and you were Christopher Columbus. Plant your flag on this pussy that was never yours to claim. You exploit and manipulate and control and destroy and we call this concept rape culture. But you call it business as usual. The environment fostered by your self-declared entitlement to our bodies puts us on this casting couch within your finger's reach, forced to place a price on our bodies and souls to appease your greasy, creeping fingers, or go back home and wait tables at a diner with the patrons all grab at your ass. Hollywood is just an exaggerated example of the same sexist system found more subtle and more subtle ways outside of it. Advancement comes to those with open legs and easy legs. This is not the price for work that what anyone should be forced to pay, yet this is the gate you place before us to earn a living wage. My body will never belong to you or any other man, for I am not property. You will not be allowed to take me by force, tax-free, to raise a flag or plant a tree. I reject your claim as the natives rejected Columbus. I reject your gospel as a heretic rejects Jesus Christ. Keep your dick pics and your indecent proposals I will forge my own way. I'd rather fail on my own than be your successful little fuck to play. Next up, Ben. Blackness, 
do, 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 focus. No, 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 focus, 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 focus on, on the hollow. Typical veteran. 
I'm not some drunken Republican, gun-toting, black coffee-drinking, murica-loving person. Instead, I just try to hide away. When you say thank you for your service, is it because you think I defended freedom and liberty? What are those? Those aren't tangible. You can't run into a fire and save liberty and you can't jump in front of a bullet for freedom. Are other families soothed by such propaganda for their dead children? That their children died for their country? When you say thank you for your service, I really wish you wouldn't. Use your voice to speak up, to stand out. Use it to change the conversation, the perspective. So don't thank me, just listen.
final calculation, or well, not calculation, just you know, take a score something there. In the meantime, I'm going to introduce again the Sword Fight Championship pencil, available to the winner of As to Lude in January, January 19th, 2019, which is the day after my birthday. So, <laughs> as an extra guilt trip for people who are like, oh, I won't go. I'm like, well, you have to go because it's my birthday. So. <laughs> The intended tournament will have at least five rounds, a one minute, a two minute, a three minute, a four minute, and a five minute. Hopefully, hopefully you know people. Could be single, double elimination, just depends on how many people we get. So. How many of you would like to see both Daria and Finn in this tournament? Woo! How many of you would like to see Renee and Skylar in this tournament? Woo! How many of you would like to see yourself in this tournament? There will be grand, there will be cash prizes, starting at, I believe, ten dollars for the fourth place, twenty-five for third place, I think. So twenty-five. To, anyway, hundred dollars is the grand prize, so that's something. Any other time Stories and Sounds are also doing a fourth Wednesday uh, reading in Kent at the Outpost, so you all should come to that too. Yes. Yeah. That's the sound system. <laughs> That's the yes. Sound. Much better actually, than this one. It actually is pretty good sound system. We're working on it. We had to raise money first, so we can. And I think they have real doorways there too. Yeah, they really they have, have doorways. Door 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 in two so, bathrooms and a full bar. Are the other yeah. judges all scored out? <laughs> Josh still scored up? Good. How it looks like Josh is still scoring. Still noting. So yeah.
specific trivial pursuit. Like it wasn't a normal trivial pursuit. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't know any of this. Anybody else? Because I'm like, why the sky stands that? Yeah, I can. Why? He was told to stand the cover. Pretending to be people, 
like dressed up wolves passing off a sheep and a mile long smorgasbord of things they'd like to eat. So maybe I don't care about being civil to a bunch of assholes who'd rather see me dead than to be the queer transgender woman you have before you. I'm done pretending to be nice to the fanatical white bubble Bible Bible thumping types. Your sick revision of Jesus never got it right and remind the fact that you think he's fucking white. Man, fuck all y'all. You will never win. Queers, we're like Hydra, a dragon you can't slay. Cut off the head, two more will grow back in its place. The more you clutch your pearls, the more brazen we become. Because making you mad is how I personally get my fix. So if you want a happy ball, well, there it is. And this is why it makes art and politics. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are familiar with WWE, and um, those who don't care, this is not going to make any sense to you all, but there was a lesson named Enzo Amore who got fired for allegedly raping a girl in Phoenix. And when the cops couldn't come up with enough evidence to prosecute, he decided to put out a rap song attacking his victim, claiming he was going to sue her for defamation of character, and then trying to pass himself off as a champion of women and how women should not be making false ac accusations. It basically he's just a human piece of shit, so this is about it. A consensual penis, you say. <laughs> That's funny. That's not the story I heard. The story I heard was that the cops ended the investigation due to a lack of evidence. That's not quite the same thing as an exoneration. In the US alone, only six out of a thousand rapists ever see a jail cell. The fact that you would pop, that you would probably skate free of rape charges was almost always a guaranteed certainty. But that doesn't make your penis consensual, nor does the mental capacity of your victim. Every time a woman accuses a man of rape, the world immediately attacks the woman first. No other crime gets this sort of public reaction. If a person is accused of robbery or murder, no one is crying out, while simultaneously making it out as if the victim actually wanted to get robbed or murdered. Like, well, he, maybe he wanted to get killed, but then that guy bothers him worse the next day. Hmm. We treat our rapists as if they were above the crime. You don't even need to be a celebrity for the world to let you off the hook, but it certainly never hurts. Man, you got lucky. Don't you understand that? They figured your victim was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so the cops decided that seeking justice for some for the time. You fucking raped the girl, dude. Women don't just lie about this shit, and they sure as hell don't go public when they do. You weren't proven innocent in a court of law. You were the beneficiary of a system that doesn't take rape seriously. And in the wake of this revelation, you put out a song threatening to sue your victim, all while claiming that so-called false allegations hurt the Me Too movement, claiming to be an ally of women, when all of your actions and lack of insight show that you only care about yourself. You claim to be the real one, certified G, bona fide Philip. You're a liar who brags about his consensual penis, when the truth of the matter is, you're a racist. You gotta leave it. Woo! Then you went missing, so you wedged yourself between two porta potties and waited for the search party. Everyone went to the corn maze, but I abandoned our family, spent 45 minutes looking for you. You and the cell phone you never answered, you and the vomit stain on your shirt, the you everyone else had already given up on. Your cheeks were two ripe tomatoes when I found you. The drool had dribbled onto your shirt. Then you yelled about how I should have left you to rot and how no one cares if you didn't have any fun. I put my hands on my hips. Suddenly, I didn't feel guilty about not knowing if you were alive or not. Two. We used to play Super Mario Brothers 3 on that old Nintendo, a nightlight, my toes frozen against basement cement. 
back when mom and dad still slept in the same bed, when you slipped liquor bottles between the cushions of the couch you were demoted to when mom caught you puking out the window. I pulled at the hem of my Bob the Builder PJs and asked why you kept crying. You said, some grown-up stuff. Well, I get it now. That economy storage unit you fit your whole life into, cement barracks for broken rose art colored pencils, a bud light neon, pictures of a grandma you never met. Meanwhile, you land in the strip of grass between the trailer you were evicted from and the meth house you aren't allowed to stay at anymore. Lying on your back in the snow, you claim to be counting stars, but I'm pretty sure you are the only one who sees them. This ethanol leaves you so warm, your unemployment checks, like your skin melting in a gray, in a gutter caked with gray sludge. Three, mom doesn't know how to look at you anymore. Your whole body is coated in a layer of swollen skin. You talk about your blood pressure, when, and when you do, your veins create hills across your skin. I think this means you're going to die soon. Everyone will have seen it coming. The coroner will ring out your liver, dripping four loco, vodka, homemade wine. They will say, what a shame, and file your body in their memories next to all the other alcoholics they cut open. And they will have dinner with their families after. Dad will blame himself because he let you drink at 16, and Mom will stay as cold as your body until she's alone in her recliner, flickering TV channels her nightly. Then she will sob and heave and swear. She can still smell the shampoo she washed your hair with when you were two and wrestled your brother into the mud. No one will be there to hear her cry. The sobs won't be from surprise. She already misses you so much. Four, sometimes mom will still pay you to fix parts of our broken home. On your hands and knees, expertly spreading caulking along the crack where little bowls slip beneath the house. This really should have been done years ago, you grunt, half laughing. You look up at me and smile. Your eyes are clear, not swirling toilet bowls or a thunderstorm with no lightning. I'm afraid I've looked too quick. Like I might mistake you for the two-year-old in the frame holding up his dump truck to show you how it works. In these moments, I'm tired of being mad at you. My therapist likes to ask if you were trigger, and I say I've been clicking that down on my own for years. Instead, I talk about the scrapbook of your drawings I still keep hidden under my bed. How the reflection of your face in beer bottles looks the same as the one on the TV screen when you rescue Princess Toadstool. You are still the picture tucked in the frame, even though you've shattered the glass. Thanks. <laughs> Anyone else want to be recorded on the open mic? Anyone? I'll go. All right. Yeah. 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 I wasn't going to, but you blessed me so much. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, people. My name is Black Rain. Woo! Hi. Uh, I'm going to spell that for you. It's B-L-A-K-R-E-I-G-N. Quick explanation. The C took it out because that's for the creator. Rain is his rule. Me, the metaphoric or symbolism of rain is like my vision, my life, darkness. Imagine darkness. You have to have some type of faith that you're not going to run through a brick wall, fall off the cliff. So that's where I get black. Uh, this piece here is a uh, Generation X. I love it. My style is a little bit different, that's why I love poetry, because it's just kind of changing. Mm -hmm. To be is to exist. Existing without purpose, that's living without personal growth. And unfulfilling of our ancestors, oh, I want to be the next generation. The generation of belief, inception of faith is incubated in our speech from the roots through the trunk to the branch of the leaf. The emotions of overflowing possibilities swell the heart, constricting doubt, fortified by determination. I want to be the next generation. Your building is trampled by the hooves of security. 
Indifferences make, shift, shape, form, prosperity. Disillusion by charity. Confirmation, human parity. Worthy, I'd say, I want to be the next generation. The generation where movers and shakers, givers, replacers, seizers of opportunity, everlasting foundation makers, casting seeds upon good soil, that's fruits of inspiration. See, I want to be the next generation. Ooh, sorry, y'all. I keep these things all in my head, and I got many things going on here. But uh, the creation of a new hybrid language that extinguishes the flames of suicide, manifesting an embracing of individuality, that's a blind penetration. I still want to be the next generation. The creation of a force that compels one to succeed, reaching, ascending beyond limitations, simplification of complex matters, disbursement of chatters, carrying the cures for cancers, redirecting these monetary answers, because mankind is the beneficiary of destiny. So I'm asking each one to teach one to be the next generation. Thank you for my stomach. <laughs> Thank you, black people.